Okay, guys, uh, last lecture for this week. <coughs> I wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, Cloud Mackay, as how it would be pronounced in traditional Scottish, but it's, uh, I guess, you know, in American slang, it's McKay, although that wouldn't have been his name, as he is the grandson of a slave, and he's from Jamaica. Um, he is considered to be the one who started the Harlem Renaissance. Now, if you don't know what the Harlem Renaissance is, uh, you can always look it up, but one of my favorite poets, Langston Hughes, is a part of it. And uh, it, it's exactly what it sounds like. You know, a renaissance is an explosion of culture and art and literature and all that kind of stuff, plays and stuff like that. Uh, you know, kind of positive, creative stuff and also uh, uh, intellectual stuff like philosophy. And in Harlem, there was uh, a renaissance in Harlem among, uh, you know, especially minorities and African-Americans. And um, this guy's uh, book, Harlem Shadows, is uh, considered the book, uh, it and Home to Harlem is considered uh, the books to have started this. Uh, so, uh, Cloud, McCl Cloud McKay, uh, well, Festivus, Festus Claudius McKay, or McKay, uh, was born in um, a rural village in Jamaica. Uh, his father was from the West African Ashanti people. Uh, sorry, his grandfather, a uh, slave. And uh, fortunately, his grandfather was able to pass down a lot of their um, kind of uh, oral traditions and stories and culture to his father and then to him. And it's a big influence on his uh, writing. Um, this The village itself that he's from, I think, was called Sunnyville or something like that. Uh, later in his literature becomes kind of like this place he looks back to as this beautiful parad paradise type place. Um, but uh, his early stuff is very much written kind of like uh, in kind of a, a dialect, uh, you know, and then it gets a little sharper later as it goes on. Uh, his poetry, uh, most of it is very strict kind of sonnets. Uh, in the sonnet form, which kind of goes back to traditional. And, you know, uh, I guess so in some ways, you know, that's, you know, modernism was kind of taking like, you know, doing kind of like new traditional form or kind of making new forms uh, of poetry popular and trying with new forms where he kind of stuck with the old the sonnet. So now he kind of departs from modernism in one way. But he is a modernist because he does... Uh, you know, write a lot about, you know, kind of racial injustice and racial subject matter. Uh, he was radical in terms of politics. Um, uh, he, uh, you know, he was a good poet. He was a good poet. But one of his chief ideas, and this is how it plays into modernism, the idea of the individual and the idea of being critical of the government, is he saw a distinct connection between uh, racial, you know, racism and capitalism. And I know some people are probably getting all upset. Oh God, he's about to start talking about all capitalism. But you know, look at capitalism, socialism, communism, whatever it is. If you've got corrupt people at the top, then it, the system's going to have trouble. And you know that that's the problem with communism. Communism. That's the problem with socialism. That's the problem with capitalism here. And, you know, capitalism works very good for some people, uh, but there is a very true saying, and the saying goes like this. Uh, there is no civilization that exists in the world that was not built on the back of a disposable workforce, a workforce that's used up and thrown away. And most of the time it's slavery, although sometimes it is, a, you know, like a low peasant or working class that's worked hell and back, really not paid well. But in the case of America, you know, it's slavery and that and the low class kind of working, you know, uh, poverty level workers. And so he felt that, that, you know, um, capitalism in America, a lot of it, uh, had its roots in, in racism, you know, this kind of like, yo, anybody can rise up and be wealthy in America, but if you've already got wealth and you can influence government and law and politics, then you're going to do a lot better than me. Um, and if you don't have wealth and, you know, it's very difficult to do so to rise up. 
uh, despite what we've been told growing up since we were kids. Um, so, you know, a lot of what he's writing about is how, you know, a lot of capitalism and, and, and the capitalist structures that were first formed in this country were formed because you had a workforce that you could just not pay and throw away. And that created some long lasting uh, racial issues. Uh, trying to think. I mean, you know, the poetry is straightforward, but I just wanted to kind of give you that and explain a little bit about how he, how he fits into, to modernism.